the Around the NFL podcast. He's done locking up the Chargers. <laughs> From the Chris Wessling podcast studio, it's Around the NFL. My name is Dan Hansis. Got heroes here, Greg Rosenthal and Mark Sessler. Yeah, I would say in our locks competition that locking up the Chargers is just asking for trouble. Whether you're a fan or enjoy their brand of football, it's not... It's not predictable on any level. Right, but, you know, and I appreciate what um, Jason's attempting to do there, Jason Zumwalt, but, like, the actual facts are that I promise to never lock them again this season. If Greg wants I, w- I would, ha- I would happily do it. I'll be curious Please to do. see if anyone dares uh, Please do. <laughs> lock against them this week. I feel like that's that's the most, uh, that's the biggest point spread you could lock, so we'll see. Interesting. Have a pick against Justin Herbert. Um... Maybe or, when he's playing Patrick Mahomes, yeah. I would. But Seems like it's, a it's been a tough uh, matchup for him, yes. This is, um, I don't know if another week will tie it, perhaps. I'm not sure. I don't remember how it works. But there won't be another week that has more teams on by than uh, week seven. Cincinnati, Dallas, Tennessee, Jets, Carolina, Houston, all off this week. Um, so we have uh, fewer games to get to. I want to um, just throw a couple things out there. My, um, first of all, injuries. You're kind of going through the game. You're thinking about what's going on in the league right now. Injuries feel like, and I know injuries are always a big part of our league, but I counted up eight teams. That's a quarter of the league have a major injury issue at the quarterback position. Mm. It's early for that. There's nothing worse than dealing with an injury at the quarterback position. It, It can kind of take down a whole operation, and in some cases it has. There are also, as we enter week seven, boys, 15 teams. I was, uh, my, my eldest son, Jack, hopped into bed with me this morning, and I was looking at the standings, and I was just going through it all with him, and then he wanted to see, like, everything. I said, oh, you could do that. The deeper metrics. Itemized it, I guess yeah. you could call it that. And then it was the entire league, one through 32. And then it caught my eye. There are 15 teams, nearly half the league, that are either three and two, three and three, or two and three. Uh, so parity is as strong as ever. Things are wide open, and you're throwing the injuries to the all over the league, uh, including at the quarterback position. It's a wide open season. Well, it's exactly what the NFL wants. All these mission things. accomplished well, on right, the battleship. I guess, I guess it's what we want. I don't know. Um, I would say last year the one thing because I, I always feel like oh, there's way more injuries this year, and then you if you dig down, it's like one percent more. But like last year, and you did this with QB index. Where at the end, you have to rank every quarterback that appeared mm-hmm. in a game, and there were like forty eight of them. Um, so it's like I think we're on pace to hit that again. Basically, we're gonna well, blast that. Past it. We're gonna it's more, blast uh, yeah. Whether the data backs up that there are more injuries this year, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. It's more just like it's just a reminder of how that is such a major factor in these seasons. You could go into a, a season feeling good about your roster, but it is the depth of your roster that really ultimately decides. I think this is also the week where I mean, and I've been barely tracking the fantasy league. I mean, but there's a lot of squawking about like. Bunch of teams on buys and a bunch of injuries already. You've mm. got like Joe right. Fabitz starting at running I, back at this. I'm point. gonna. This is my favorite week of the year, by the way. So we got my my favorite team on buy. Yeah, I'm having a totally lost fantasy year. Um, Whoa. I'm already out of contention essentially, which stinks. But also, there's a freedom to that. There is. So I got no Jets to worry about. I got no fantasy like thing to like obsess over. Just watch some football, like the old days. Like a real American. Like a true American. And then Hit my in, music now. Yeah, oh. and, then, and then go into a studio and honk about it for 90 minutes on Sunday night. Can't wait. Okay. Yeah, these teams and coaches take Honka a week Holics off. We don't take a week off. Uh, there are six teams on buy in week 13 deep into the year. So that's will be a nice little hmm. mini buy for us. All right, let's get into it. On Wednesday's show, in which we forked uh, multiple teams, uh, we previewed the Island games, the primetime games, today. Oh, to later tonight, we're going to have uh, the recap of Thursday night football. Uh, remind me of the game, Greg. It's Jag Saints. Hopefully Trevor Lawrence plays. Game time decision trending towards as we record this. And Greg will be on that uh, call with a special guest. So that's coming up later tonight. But let's dig in now to the rest of the games. And the first overall pick does go to Greg Rosenthal. Not Greg Rosenstein. No. No. Not the one, the only. I got lucky again Definitely with the number one Definitely not the only Greg pick. Rosenthal. Yeah. No, wow. there, are, there are more out. You know what? With there, I might be the only one with Triple G. Only one on the planet. I, I would guarantee you that's not the case. I, I don't know. Possible? I've, I've, I've Googled. I don't know. It's possible. There's not another Dan Hansis, I can tell you that. There is a Mark Sessler with a C, and I think he's like a, a chef on the East Coast. Like a, Kill him. 
Yeah, he's got to go. He must go. I'm taking Lions, Ravens. Let's, you know, remove the drama here. What a game. I mean, we already talked one of the games of the year is Dolphins, Eagles. But there's two games this week, Dan, involving two teams ranked in the top seven DVOA on the season. And that's your number two Detroit Lions right now and your number four Baltimore Ravens. So that's a little numerical support to the feeling that I've had that this Ravens team is better than the dumb mistakes that they made, that underlying uh, foundation in terms of how tough they are on both sides of the ball, how much they move the ball, and how well uh, they've done preventing other teams to move the ball, uh, is the profile of a really good team, and it's a show-me-something game for both teams. Kind of like who's tougher. That's how I start. Both of these teams uh, have been able to run the ball at various points, but not all the time, and I think they both really want to, so who's going to be tougher up front? I, I love the idea of, like, Roquan Smith, who uh, is a big friend of our show for various reasons, dating back to last season. Um, and Patrick Queen. A friend our, of the show? Well, I mean, he was the subject of a much that feels strong. debated uh, emergency podcast. Yeah. But he's been, like, that trade, which, you know, like, the, I, the Bears gave up, gave up on him. Like, uh, been a like, superstar. He's been great for them, and I think he's made Patrick Queen better, and, and their defense is good. A lot. A little bit of a flashpoint focus. I the know. And in the end, the yeah. emergency <laughs> podcast looks like it was worth it. It he's, was. He's, he should be in the defensive player of the year. Yeah, uh, it was. A, it was fresh, and like they they've been good versus the pass as well. And it's like I I like I, this Lions passing game. I feel like there's been these periods with Jared Goff where it's like. Uh, okay, he fits in the offense, but it's not because of Jared Goff. And it's like, Jared Goff's making some plays because he's got some talent around him and they've got a great offensive line. So now I'm like, Stop. Jared Goff is like Enough. actually on a week-to-week basis playing the best football of his entire career and feels like he, he's PFF's number one quarterback. We Very all, similar to 2018 at this point in the season when we, he was le- a legit MVP candidate. We all owe Jared Goff an apology. Because I, I can't remember another player that reached the heights that he did in Los Angeles that was ever written off or thought of more as an afterthought. Go check the tape of this podcast. Maybe one of us was into it, but it all seemed like that Stafford trade. He was the guy that went back to make the money work. He was the guy that would simply serve as the bridge till the Lions, you know, hit the reboot, the quarterback position. And instead he's become a real obvious difference maker. Now, does that mean that he can't be flummoxed, that he can't fail in a big spot if you cook him up and, and, and put him in a comfortable spot? Of course that can happen. It just hasn't really happened very often in, in Detroit. And this is one week where it could, because I'm really impressed with Mike McDonald. I give John Harbaugh a lot of credit for this hire that he made to replace McDonald. Uh, Don Wink Martindale. Harbaugh has been really good at hires in general, I would say. Uh, that's one of his strengths as a coach. And if anyone can make Jared Goff hold the ball a little longer, and can cook them up with some pressures. Uh, I think it's Mike McDonald in this Ravens defense. Now, they do have some injuries. Marcus Williams, we saw, go right past us in London with that hamstring injury. Mm-hmm. Yep. I don't think he's going to play in this game. They don't have a great pass rush, which is surprising for such a good defense, uh, but they do like to cook you up uh, a little bit with their pressure. I think they use like their secondary and their pressure a lot, too. They have 11 different players with a sack. That's mm. no team. No team can touch that. I, you know, I think, though, with Detroit, with no David Montgomery, um, Jameer Gibbs is still banged up. It sounds like he could potentially play. But even, like, Craig Reynolds, their number three guy, it didn't practice on Wednesday. And we'll see about I think today, it's so. a Jameer Gibbs game. I think they're going to need and some It would some be Gibbs. time for that, yeah. And you know what? Let's have a big Jameer Gibbs game because they drafted him to be an immediate impact player. And let's see if he's healthy enough to do so. Yeah, almost talked about at the top of the show, a lot of quarterback injuries. Almost every team we're going to talk about has a positional group that's kind of under siege. Uh, for the Lions, it is that running back room uh, with injuries. That is that is a good game, Greg. It's a great game. They're three-point favorites, by the way, the Baltimore Ravens in this game, and they need... That feels... I, that seems like a little overly respectful, but... It's basically saying two even-ish teams. I think that's that's right, but you... Baltimore would, feels like a one and a half. It. Let's pick it. Yeah. Let's pick it. Um, taking, I like the Lions. I'm taking Baltimore. Yeah, I like but, Detroit. I, I think Ravens, and we, were, we saw it up close in London... They're red zone issues that jump out to me, and I think the Lions are going to continue to move the ball and put up points. Are the Ravens are the Ravens able to do that and match them if this game starts turning into maybe not a shootout, but gets into the 20s? I, don't I think came so. really close to locking the Lions. Um, I, oh. I think that this is – the reason all this game is I don't remember a time – in my life when Detroit Baltimore was something that was a source of intrigue for me, and it's completely that it's, right It's now. very intriguing. I, I don't want to beat a – you know, the same drum every week, but man, they just, 
need Bateman and Beckham to make plays for them. Because I think that's where the mismatch could be. Detroit's been sneaky, mm. very banged up in their secondary, and they should be able to win some of those one-on-ones on the outside, but they haven't. All right, let's move on. This is an easy one. I, I believe this could have easily been the first overall pick. Uh, the Los Angeles tra- uh, Chargers traveling to Arrowhead to face the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, Chiefs are laying five and a half points here. Uh, by the way, the over-under that Lions uh, Ravens game, 43. That feels all right to me. 43. Uh, here it's 48. Uh, and we talked about it on the show Wednesday. Miko Hardman uh, joins the Chiefs or rejoins the Chiefs in a trade from the Jets. Um, you, you, you assume this is a guy that is going to be able to join the fray and, and be a part of this offense rather quickly. And while he is not a difference maker, uh, he was a real piece of that team when he was there. And they need somebody. And I think that's the thing that's going to jump out to me here and we can get into the charger side of it and how much Herbert struggled on Monday night and the disappointment of that game. But the chiefs for me, one of the biggest stories in the league is in the second half of the regular season, because Kansas city is going to be all right. They're going to go 13 and four, 12 and five or 14 and three, and they're, they're going to be there, but are they going to be able to identify either on the roster now or at the trade deadline, that missing piece on their offense and in a game with uh, against a, an elite passer, uh, like Herbert, will they be able to hmm. get into a shootout and win if it comes to that? I I think they're they're not ready for that now, but I think this is a perfect test because we've just seen this matchup so many times in the Brandon Staley era, and so we know what a Chiefs offense looks like against this Chargers defense. And I know the Chargers defense came out of the bye with a relatively promising performance against Dallas. Couldn't get the stops when they really needed it and, you know, took a fourth down stop early in the game. That that took some points off the board. And uh, it's, I, I hesitate to say that, like, ooh, the Chargers defense is really making some big improvements. The old Chargers Chiefs offense, rather, Dan, like, would get 32 points in this matchup every single right. time, every single time. And so if they are stuck in a low-scoring game, and I, I kind of expect they will be, uh, then we know it, it's absolutely different. They're going to have to start taking some guys out of the lineup, whether it's Valdez Scantling or Sky Moore, or someone's going to get taken out. Yeah, I don't, I, I think, Dan, you yesterday you thought, well, Miko Hardman, fine, but like, uh, you kind of would want the Chiefs to go source and find someone a little bit more uh, juicy, and, and they didn't do that. Uh, I, I don't, I don't, the trade to me feels, they, sort- time, but they do, but that, so that this is not going to solve their problems. Um, He's I think a fourth this is, receiver, yeah. This is their defense. I mean, the, like the Chiefs defense, which is, you know, second fewest yards per game, and like, there, there's just consistency. They've had the same coaching staff there for so long, and like they've got nine, they've been given nine days rest off to that kind of wacky game against the Broncos. Right, I, I kind of felt like the Chiefs were just sort of screwing around during part of that game, just sort of throwing things at the. I don't at know. The ball. I think they were. Fr- I hear what you're saying. They threw a lot of tri- trick plays and all that stuff, but it's kind of like because their normal stuff doesn't work. Right. Well, they are working through that, but it's like I, I think their defense is one of the reasons they're allowed to do that without getting caught into tight losses. You mentioned the rest. Tough break here for the Chargers. I mean, right. this is a legitimate gripe that the Chiefs get five extra days rest like in the in the biggest road division game. I mean, that these two teams all especially, season. right? Yeah, there there's some uh, insane stat about that. That uh, let's see, uh, let me see if I can find it. It is uh, Andy Reid. With four plus days of rest advantage as head coach in his career, twenty-seven and three. That just makes <laughs> me like imagine him like taking long, comfortable naps. Well, and some of this is he's a great head coach and has had great teams, but plus thirty-three turnover differential, average final score essentially twenty-six to sixteen, and wow. yeah. So the, LA's against it a little bit right now. Greg, what did you take um, from the Herbert performance on Monday night? I thought people got a little carried away wanting to like show, hey, for once it was Justin Herbert's fault. I thought he played a a pretty good three quarters, certainly didn't end that game well. Really? I thought he missed a lot of throws. He missed plenty of throws, but he made plenty of throws too. I don't know like why the glove on the off hand would make that big of a difference in accuracy. I'm not smart enough to know that, so I don't really... That doesn't make sense to me Wait, as that, the reason who's ex- why. Who's saying that? Well, just like that. 
that his performance was so off accuracy wise. And for the first time he's playing with, with this broken finger and he's wearing a glove, which he, he absolutely never does. It doesn't seem like that's the reason why, because he also made a lot of really good throws in that game. The thing that is Herbert's superpower though, I think makes him look worse in games like that, which is like, he refuses to take a sack. So in a game where he was heated up, he was pressured on almost 50% of his passes. That's the most in any Chargers game this year. It's like that would lead the league by far if that was consistent, you know, getting pressured that much. He just gets rid of the ball. And so he's having to make quick decisions. He refuses to take a sack, and it led to a lot of bad throws. But there were also, as you mentioned, just like four or five throws he missed. Ones that usually are usually back, po- make. back yes, pocket absolutely. throws. So that was, a, I, w- I would imagine, he was very frustrated uh, with his performance there. I give uh, this Chiefs linebacker group a lot of credit. I really like them. Nick Bolton, Drew Tranquil when he's out there, Willie Gate. Like, I think that's been a little bit of their secret sauce. They're pretty good at every level of their defense. You you mentioned the stats. Like, they were a legit top 10 defense. So this is a different Chiefs defense than the Chargers. Those guys have been, face. they generate big takeaways. Right, Bolton and Tranquil. It's like, on passing downs, I really like them. Um, the other guy that's jumped out to me with the Chiefs, again, it's the offense that I'm really interested in here, is Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah Pacheco. Uh, that's a tough name for me. Pacheco? Pacheco. Pacheco. He's been good. And Said it right. That's he has nice. not been. He has not been the problem for them. But again, they need that. They need somebody else. And maybe we'll see something this week. Uh, Khalil Mack, by the way, has seven sacks this year. Really good. Well, well six were I mean, in one game. I know. I mean, well, that that was a nice one. I went down that, that road with Shaq Barrett though that one time, and I got you know totally fried with my instant analysis on that situation. Uh, your analysis being that he wasn't well, that good, right? Well, it was that all. The, whenever you get these guys that have this game, where like suddenly right. you're playing at a different like human level, and then you, I typically think you end up with like three sacks. You, th- the rest you thought he would be a bad free agent signing? No, I no, believe no, no. was well, your thing, and then he was kind of the key to a Super right. Bowl champion. No, he was that's, hoisting that's, a Lombardi Trophy. That's tilting the accuracy yeah. completely. I believe over, he was overboard. seen as a, a key difference maker. For I just the don't world buy these like, bucks. No, it's these one game explosions. Yeah, you brought it up. That's fair. Why did I do that? All right. The third overall pick goes to Mark Edward uh, all right. Sessler. Yeah, that's easy for me. Um, I probably would have taken this at number two and been, like, verbally fried by the group, but I'm going to go Browns at Colts. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> I think it's a fair comment. <laughs> sure. I'll start here. Hey, nobody is nobody's going to fry you huh? for taking the Browns. Well, this is good number three now. Mark, this is a safe space. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. great. No one's going to judge you? Well, you know what? But uh, I, th- Your I, favorite quarterback plays for the other team, though. You know, back in the day, he, he was your guy. I did have a Gardner Minshew, Minshew thing, but Minshew, you know, if they get the, the version of Gardner Minshew they got last week, which was, what, three picks and a strip sack, um, and Cleveland is not actually, for how good their defense has been, they have not been generating takeaways. I think they have four on the year, which is a little surprising for... Mm how good they've been. Um, but Min- that version of Minshew, it's like, I feel like Minshew can, like, he'll give you two or three games where he's real spicy, then the floor falls out. I don't remember ever seeing him that bad. No, he, he looked awful. And that was the game. Jaguars' yeah. defense being better than we've expected them to be. And a lot of that was him. He just think, yeah. made a lot of bad decisions yeah. and just terrible well, throws. I, like, it's almost like he was uh, like, I'm going to show the Jaguars what they're missing out, and then he just... Oofa! No, they're happy. With, they, they seem happy to have moved on to a, a different quarterback, a potential <laughs> Hall of Famer down the road. Uh, I, I love this game for Cleveland. As long as they get, it depends, I think, for me, what happens at quarterback. There's been some, I think, just the whole Deshaun Watson situation I have has been news. really weird. Well, is it the Amari, Amari Cooper news? No. Okay. Good. But that, maybe we'll, well double um, up. Amari Cooper said he will. he's going to practice today, so. Deshaun Watson uh, currently dealing with a, a mystery injury uh, later now revealed as a micro tear of the rotator cuff and rap sheet yeah. reported in the past hour that Watson is practicing today, Thursday for the first time in a while per OC Alex van Pelt uh, confirming a report from Amari Cooper. Yeah. I Amari Cooper. Would... Like I kind of appreciate a player coming. Is out it a to... report? If his teammates no, said it, no, he's just giving us just information like first hand yeah. information about his teammate. I yeah. Think. See, I got the big scoop. I'm Amari Cooper. <laughs> see? Yeah. It's shipped right into a, a media <laughs> career. Um, you know, for me, it's like they. This is a still a Browns offense that I think is is quite suspicious. Uh, they, you don't have Nick Chubb. I, Jerome Ford helped out a little bit last week. They survived with PJ Walker playing a really bad game at quarterback. Not a bad spot if Deshaun Watson plays. He's not. It doesn't sound healthy to me. But if he plays, like, how about show up for once? Show up for once because I think the defense can absolutely just take care of a a Colts offense that, like, with Jonathan Taylor, like 
He, he needs to show up at some point. Well, he he Watson had his best game, I think, as a Brown on the game he got hurt. Right. Uh, so can he keep that going? It's against a Colts defense. We mentioned on Wednesday, Grover Stewart's now out for six games. To me, that was the one thing that had a chance to make this defense special. It's definitely not special otherwise, but they had a couple good defensive tackles. It's just hard to imagine this Gardner Minshew offense going up against the best defense in the league. The way that the Jags played the Colts last week was straight up disrespectful. It was crazy. It didn't matter what formation the Colts did. I think it, it was a Derek Klassen on Twitter put this put this out there. The you could they were putting out four wide receivers, and it didn't matter. Like the Jaguars were just staying in, the, or maybe it was Nate Tice in their base formation, and basically saying, "We're not going to let you run the ball no matter what. We will. You can put however many receivers are out there." And we'll just leave our cornerbacks on an island. This is Jacksonville. I mean, their cornerbacks, it's not the, the Browns by any means. It's like, we'll, we'll give you one-on-ones everywhere, but no matter what, we're not going to let you run. And we don't think your wide receivers can beat us. And we don't think Gardner Minshew can beat us. And you know what? They were absolutely right. And so, like, why wouldn't the Browns play that way? Why wouldn't every team play that way? Because Michael Pittman's the only guy that you really worry about. And you don't worry about Gardner Minshew being special, making special throws. And by the way, like, the Browns, lock you down on the outside better than any team in the league. It is a tough match. I have a stat that Greg will absolutely not care about. Okay, let's hear it. We know where how Greg Greg is in, in this world. I'm in your head. I'm you're in not, your head. I'm in my head. It's just the first thing that came to my mind when I read this. Greg, when people think uh, back to past conversations, that, I'm in your head. It doesn't mean that you live in their head. It is exactly. very yes, presumptuous. I'm, I'm exactly. Living in your head. Okay, got it. You are not. First of all, that it's a, 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 that's what they always say. All right, so it makes fewest, it feel better. Just it, I know it's yeah. fine. Fewest yards allowed through five games in a season by a team since the 1971 Colts. That is the Browns. I mean, I threw that <laughs> out there on <laughs> on Sunday night. The last time, but the, 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 remember when I was saying I thought this reminded me of like the 1994 <laughs> Bill Belichick defense. Yeah, it's it's better than that so far. The last time they finished with the number one total defense, the Browns, 1955. There have been a lot of years of bad defense, and it's like I think the Niners game last week was not all Cleveland's defense entirely. There was some weather involved and some other stuff, but like when they put it on teams, like I, they they all really right, do Mark. it. And so I'm not because I'm telling you why I'm saying yeah. that because I'm taking the Cleveland Browns. I think for the first time in a really long time, and I'm locking them up against the Colts on the road. They're giving up two point five points, <sighs> two and a half points. Very nerve wracking for me and Rosenthal. Why? Locking up the Brownies. You haven't done it a lot. Because I didn't see a lot of good lock opportunities. Well, we, Sunday, we Sunday get is dark, dangerous. We get Dark Sessler if they blow it against uh, Minshew. I, and that line is probably going to change if Watson plays, which at this point, if he's practicing, you know, signs are pointing up. It's actually gone up to three already. Like, I mean, why practice? He's got to be feeling somewhat better to be practicing. Right. So, yeah. All right. That's a, I think that's a solid lock. I think the Browns are in good position in that game. Let's see. All right, one more. Mark sneaks back to you. All right, I like to watch um, disasters just unfold before my eyes, and I, I am magnetized. You, you like blowouts you can finish your notes with in <laughs> quarter two is what you're like to say. He wants, uh, he's got the brownies, and he, uh, you know, yeah, he wants yeah. to keep the focus where it needs to yeah, be but for the in this, in this case, I mean, I, I think you've sensed some passion around my distaste and or almost, I said, joy for what's occurring to the Patriots. Weird, because like, you I, wrote the Belichick letters. You, yeah, what you is that about? Let's, let's, let's sit there for a second, because I noticed there was a real venom, uh, and this has come from a guy that adores uh, this type of heat yeah. on the Patriots, but I sense you talking about the Pats and, and Belichick, in a way, with a, a, a hissing uh, a sense. What is, where is that coming from? Why are you so mad about the Patriots? And again, I'm not complaining. No, no, In fact, no. I love it. Just curious. I agree that it's curious uh, to me too, because like overall, I have like Bill Belichick's one of my like kind of overall favorite NFL figures of all time. But I kind of like they've also quietly been living in this like dream carpet ride for decades, and it's like you just it got normalized, and it's different, and it's new, and it's interesting, and it's like mm. if the if Belichick truly is the greatest coach, and and he has a chance to continue this job beyond this year, it's like. I'm more interested to see how he gets out of this mess than, the, than ha, that how often he won with I mean, Tom Brady. The carpet ride ended five years ago. Five years it is did, a pretty long time. It now. did, but <laughs> like they, but you'd argue that they they were a playoff team. I mean, like, they, like maybe Mac Jones worked. They were they were they hanging around one with eight or nine team. wins. One playoff. This is different. The They're the worst Tom team in left, the league right now. As I said at the time, they weren't special anymore. Now they're bad. They're bad. How bad will they be? This seems like a, a, a chance for them to 
I don't mean they're back in Gillette in in general in the past, even post Brady, when they're in their building, they 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 could be competitive. But this is the same team that got shut out by the, the Saints a couple weeks ago, and they're giving up nine points. I, I don't like the new raising the hand point thing. Point of right. order. Point of order. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. You also don't Mark, call on him. You Mark don't has, have to call on him. But. Mark has not actually drafted the game yet or revealed what the game is. So I think this well, is a is, good point of it order. It is <laughs> Bills at Patriots, and the Patriots at home are getting nine points. I don't know if that's ever happened. Oh no, to no Bill way. Belichick in New England. Maybe, maybe be pri- before Tom maybe Brady, they were a bad team yeah. then. They were a bad team. Um, and this is like another little thing that stood out to me. Where is this little thing? Hold on. You have to go back to the 1992 Dick McPherson run New England Patriots. Greg, you remember those years? Just a disaster I, for the, an offense this the, bad. In New the England. year where he won five or six games was actually one of the best like Patriot seasons. This was not that year. They, yes, this was that not was, that year. I remember that with some spicy comebacks and he's crying on the sideline. You know, probably wish he still was at Syracuse, but I get that. Um, I don't, for me a little bit too, it's like the, the Bills escaped that Giants game. They escaped. I think if that call doesn't happen, if, they, if Darren Waller gets a call in the end, like that, the Bills are we're asking huge questions about the Bills. It's like Josh Allen, he'd been dominant in the stretches. He leads the league in completion percentage. He's also been, I think, in that Giants game, like he left some passes on the field and like seemed to not read certain wide open guys. And it's like outside of Stefan Diggs, it's like it's hard to really say he's connected with someone on a consistent basis. Um, missed James Cook on what could have been a big touchdown a week ago. So I think it's like if you can't do it in this game, Buffalo, I mean, this is a place to go flex your muscles. And I think it's there's some added juice to it with being New England. Um, get right because I, 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 for a couple of weeks, I see the Bills as like a dominant operation. And then I'm like, I don't, weird. I don't trust them. They're, they're a weird team. They're like a team that you kind of know what's coming by the end of the first quarter. Like, they're either yeah. going to just put it on a team or they're just a little bit out of sync. And they did, to their credit, after what was a woeful first half against the Giants, uh, they had a couple of long touchdown drives in the second half. And the defense didn't exactly light the world on fire either. And they were able to hold off at the very end there. So they were very fortunate to get out of there with a win. And if nothing else, I guess it's a reminder uh, to that team that, you know, you can't just walk into any building and say, we're the Bills and and just roll because Look the at Giants us. almost beat you in prime time. That would have been a huge embarrassment. Yeah, but they, they own this matchup. These are not the Giants. I trust them to destroy the Patriots way more than I just, you know, against the Giants who there was, you know, a lot of coaching crossover there in terms of, you know, knowledge and Dable. And it just is an unfamiliar matchup versus a team that you ended Whatever was left that was special to me truly ended at the end of the Patriots playoff season, actually. Like that, even though they made the playoffs that season, the fact that they lost 47 to 17 uh, in the playoffs and didn't stop Josh Allen one single time Mm-mm. in that game or the regular season game before, late in the regular season, this defense this year, which I thought had a chance to be very good is not going to be good because of injuries partly and because it's just not happening for some of their young players up front really growing in, in a way that I expected. But I- injuries are a, a huge part of it. They have 20 players on their injury report this week. The Patriots. Mm. That is almost half the roster. That is outrageous. And like seven or eight of them are just out. out. They're, they've got the thing where like they can't even field a normal inactives list because they've got more players that are out than they have inactives. And then they've got another 15 guys on the injury report. So it's so a good luck with that. The real disadvantage for me this week. Uh, let's see uh, something out of Von Miller though. Or no, I don't know if it's going to happen this week, but like, I think it's just something to watch throughout the course of the season that he hasn't not only been playing a full complement of snaps, but just doesn't even look remotely like Von Miller, which is, you know, always a risk when you're a 34 year old coming off of a knee. Construct. It's fair to ask the question, Greggy. All right, let's take a break, and when we come back, we'll get back to the draft. All right, welcome back. It comes back to me, and I will grab a game that I feel like is going to be interesting. The Atlanta Falcons uh, traveling to Tampa to face the Buccaneers. Um, Do we have the Baker sound? Yeah, let's listen to Baker, who, you know, the Lions game last week was a tough one. I think they I think internally Tampa entering that game three and one, I believe, saw it as a measuring stick game and they did not measure up. And there's a lot of frustration. Let's listen to Baker. We suck today. I suck today. We suck today. It was awful. Um, if we play like that, we're going to lose every time. So uh, I think the defense and special teams did an amazing job yet again. And offense, we just need to pick our up. OK, 
I like it. Yeah, same. I like it. Uh, they're owning up to it, and and they did leave plays on the field. Uh, Baker did not play very well, but they also, you know, they just missed a couple ones. A very frustrating performance. He missed uh, the young kid uh, Palmer a couple times. The the Evans hookup wasn't there. Uh, Godwin was the only player they really had any t- type of uh, chemistry. Uh, and their screen game, which is an important part of their offense, they couldn't get that going. And a lot of credit's got to go to Detroit and and what they've been able to do all year, which has become a well balanced team. And they and they mess they mess with t- Tampa. Now they get the Falcons, and the Falcons to me have been a disappointing team, boys. Um, on, on really on both sides of the ball, and I just feel like I two- disagree with you there. But defense has been solid. Okay, good. surprisingly good. But you're right on offense. Yes. Okay. I mean. Compared what, to what we were saying a month ago. What were we saying? What is their DVOA overall? It's buried. 25th, for sure. And they're not They're not great. I just didn't expect much on defense. They've yeah. been good on, on defense a, a, on third down, like red zone. Top, a small top nit to pick. Total. They're average, which for them is better. I believe Tampa at home is in a very good spot here uh, against Atlanta. Mm. And I keep on thinking that we're going to eventually get the bottoming out game um, at the quarterback position for Atlanta, where Arthur Smith, instead of these constant cuts to the sideline and he's stroking his mustache and and frustration, he actually does something about it. I think it's going to happen after this game. I'm locking up the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, uh, which I didn't think I would ever do this season, lock up a a Baker Mayfield team. But I I, I like what I've seen from the Bucs overall. I like him at home, and I like him. I liked hearing Baker and uh, that he's pissed, and they're looking to take it out on somebody. Yep, I'm with you. I almost locked this, too, and I I see this as a low-scoring game that allows the Bucs to magnify their strengths. Um, They are third against the run in terms of EPA, six fewest yard rushing yards allowed. Listen to some of these totals this year. Vikings held to 41 yards to the ground, bad rushing team. Bears, 67. Saints, 70. The Lions, 40. I know they were without some guys, but it's like, this is what they do. Vita Vea, as much as Baker Mayfield, is kind of the guy in this game that I think can take Atlanta, who, for all the whistling, and I did a lot of it about what their identity would be this year, uh, it's like the 14th best rushing team. They've not been that great at that, and they put Desmond Ritter into a situation at times if you stop their run where this guy that you just want to not make mistakes has been making mistakes the last couple of games and starting to turn the ball over, and I don't love the situation for the Falcons, and I'm with you. I'm with you, Dan. I feel like this could be where the trigger, because this is a good roster, and the defense is solid, and you've got parts, and it's like, why not try Taylor Heineke if you're going to get the same results with Ritter? I, I hear He's had you. one good game and okay. a bunch of bad games. I hear all of that. I think you guys are right. I think last week kind of was a bottoming out. I think he's had a couple bottoming out, and you're right. It's just sort of on Smith to, to make the change at some point. But Arthur Smith bears as big a, you know, blame of, of anyone. Not that he picked Ritter and that he stuck with Ritter, but that everything else is such a mess. Mm. I mean, you get to delay a game on the goal line, yeah, essentially, with the game on the brutal. line, and then you come back and you almost, almost get another. That's not on the quarterback. And what happens to the ensuing play, Greg? They, uh, Ritter throws a terrible Right, because it was yeah. almost like you get you get to delay a game, Greg, and then you almost get clocked okay. again, and then you kind of panic and you threw it up for grabs. Okay, so that's, Terrible. that's Arthur Smith. But more, you know, looking from above is this run game. And that's the thing that, th- that really gets me. In this matchup a year ago, and I think this is a good litmus test, kind of like I talked about with Chiefs Chargers. In this matchup a year ago, teams are pretty similar for the most part. The Falcons ran for 151 and 174. They split the two games, but the Falcons running game got it, got it going both times. You remember last year's Falcons running game? It was awesome. Yeah. Tyler Algier. It did not have Bajan Robinson, who is awesome. And yet this year... They're 18th in DVOA in terms of their running attack. And it's not about Bajan Robinson. Tyler Ajir is the perfect example of, of how much worse it is because he's the same player. He averaged almost five yards per carry a year ago, and he's averaging 3.2 now. It's the blocking. It's the scheme. Everyone came prepared for it. There's different uh, defenses, which are maybe a little more ready for this zone blocking scheme. And even though they have the same offensive line and, and the same scheme, none of it's really working. And that's Arthur Smith. And you look at the Rams, for instance, and the and the 49ers, who their running game is very diverse. They mix a lot of power. They do a lot of different things. The Falcons are kind of their do what they do, the zone running game, and they came back with what they did a year ago. And it is not working. And to me, that's that's messed up their entire team. And Ritter's at fault too, but it's messed up Ritter too. And I don't know, because this is a tough matchup against a pretty good Bucks run. Deep. I guess like if you like teams, teams, you know, knew for months, this is what the Falcons want to be. And they're going to put out a quarterback with very little experience. 
and I think defenses this year versus even a year ago are pre like preparing and planning for the Falcons in a different way, selling out to stop the ground game. And it's putting in these games, you know, these games where Ritter's throwing the ball 35, 40 times. Like, that was not the plan. I mean, yeah. last week, Ritter had 10, there were 10 passes defense for their opponent. He, he put it on the other team's hands 10 yeah. times. And that was, what? and he's thrown, yeah, he's thrown five interceptions in the last three weeks. And if you were actually watching the games, like, this was coming. He was throwing the ball right in the hands of the defenders every week in the first month. And he was just the beneficiary of a lot of good luck and a lot of drops. And now they're not dropping the ball. And I think like what you're saying about the running scheme and wh wh what's not quite right there, I think everything connects. Yeah, to but the their quarterback. quarterback play was so terrible last year. I know. And was part of it. I know. So, But what is it then? That, like, I, what is it? I think, well, sometimes there's things that are unexplainable, but the, the team that they brought back in the scheme – Teams are more ready for it for whatever reason, and they're not playing as they well. Have, I don't know. But they have a prodigy at running back, right. and Who's, he has not great. been a problem. But, you know, I'm not going to say anything negative about him, but he's not winning games by himself. He he's usually has a beautiful uh, highlight reel play every week. Is that Does he need to get the ball more? Is it, I don't know. I, it does seem like it's time to do something, Arthur, to mix this thing up before you blow the season. And yet the winner of this game fired. is, is – uh, Maybe my favorite, because I don't trust the Saints. This could this could sound bad when you listen to it on Friday, but just like it's crazy how big this game is. Interesting game. All right, uh, Greg, you're up. Okay, I am gonna take a late game. Steelers at Rams. Good value pick at this yeah. point, I think. Uh, this Rams team very watchable. Steelers coming off a bye. Are they gonna be different? One of the things that I look to with the Rams is if you can protect Stafford, he's one of the best quarterbacks in the league. I think he is playing as well in the regular season as just about any of his great regular seasons. As someone who wrote the QB index for basically all of most of Stafford's career, I can tell you at the end of the year, what a flex he would end up usually 11 to 15. He actually didn't have that many great regular seasons. He yeah. had a couple. And this to me is, is one of them, but their offensive line when they've gone up against Great competition, hasn't protected him as well, and this is great competition. So Highsmith and Watt, if you can get after Stafford, the Steelers can make this an uglier game. And I think I, I thought really hard about locking up the Rams here. I do like them to win this game. They are favored by three. I, I didn't pull the trigger in the end because Watt and Highsmith just worry me, and Tomlin coming off a bye. It's uh like the Steelers are a weird defense, and I, I really – I think we've all kind of like yards per game are sort of they can they can be mystifying and not really tell the story, but they they give up the third most yards per game on defense. But their takeaways at the end of games and close games, especially like it's like TJ Watch magic power, um, absolutely completely changed the script. And I, I I think that's a huge thing about them. Like where in this I see this being real tight. Um, I like the fact for a really bad offense that probably at this point should just lean on Jalen Warren and George Pickens. I, you know, Jalen Warren feels like. He could be a little. He could be a little bit special for a really vanilla attack. But you are getting Pat Fryermuth um, back at practice this week. Deontay Johnson's back at practice. Like I mean, that is these, that's huge. That, Deontay Johnson's you need these, their best you overall need these, wide receiver, as good as Pickens is. Right. I mean, this is an offense that this is hard to do. Almost they have averaged twelve point six points per game. They're the worst red zone attack in the league. They've scored thirty point plus points one twice since twenty twenty one, and they haven't crossed four hundred yards as an offense in fifty three games. Yeah, and they're they're facing an offense that is going to score points. I think it's a tough matchup for Pittsburgh. You got to hmm. travel across the got to travel across the country. I know you're coming off your bye, and I I imagine Tomlin has been obsessing over this roster and how to fix things. So maybe you see a little bit different in terms of scheme and Matt Canada on the offensive side of the ball. But I think the Rams are gonna. They're going to continue to play well at home and score points. And I just don't see it. I don't see it coming with this offense, with this quarterback right now, the ability to score 22 uh, points or whatever it's going to take. Okay. I, I agree for the most part. And I love the energy that Raheem Morris has the Rams defense playing with. They're not the most talented group. They play with a lot of energy. You can see it. But Deontay Johnson is a huge addition for a team we've recognized can't really win schematically, but he's just a player that wins on his own. He gets open about as regularly as any number two type of receiver in the league. Fryermuth is a big time player for them too. So th that really changes their offense and, and makes it challenging uh, for the Rams defense. And then you flip it and you lose Kyron Williams on the Rams side. We didn't hit that 
on Wednesday. He's going to be out, according to reports, multiple weeks. His backup also was hurt, Ronnie Rivers, last week. He's out four to five weeks. He was put on injured reserve. And so they're doing this thing where they're like, trying out a bunch of different players during practice. They Zach Evans is a guy they've liked who's a special has been a special teamer. They actually re-signed Daryl Henderson That's to their practice to squad. That's a weird one. That's wild. Royce Freeman who's bounced around is there. So they're just they're trying things, and they want to run the ball, but that's a pretty significant That kills him because Kyron Williams, like, in that second half against the He's Cardinals, time was, runner. I, like I thought that was what they could be for weeks and weeks going forward. Uh, somebody feels very confident uh, this week. Oh, oh yeah? Wow. Yeah. Glad I didn't watch this section. Let's head to the Cincinnati Uh-oh. Zoo. What do we got, Eric Roberts? Yes, guys. The uh, Cincinnati Zoo is weighed in. No video this week. No video. No message. Lazy. But they... I mean, uh, they're probably all in jail. The way they're fighting, it's it's amazing. <laughs> no, domestic. actually, the one member of the zoo is, is out. Is out. I mean, one of them's a child, so I yes. hope he's not put into So jail. I assume I'm texting Nick, right? <laughs> Uh, Nick yeah, it's yeah, okay. typically so no, Nick. Nick, uh, he calls himself the zookeeper yeah. now, I believe, which is the brand. So no is. video message, but he did want to let you know they picked the Rams over the Steelers, and the only thing he wanted me to, um, I guess, that you guys know is that what quote is Greg is a coward. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's all he wanted me to tell you guys. Okay. So. It doesn't even make sense. Keep that messaging clean and simple. I like it. Make sure you call Greg a coward on my behalf. End quote. So he texted you. <laughs> And he hears my pick and tell Greg he's yeah, a coward. Yep. He was uh, busy, you know, so no video this week. Uh, if, <laughs> you can, if I can't get to it, make sure you call Greg a coward on my behalf. Mm. All right. And now you have. There you go. Job and done. Do, Greg, go uh, don't use your clout to bury uh, Eric Roberts. He's just the messenger. Why are you, would in, Nick, I bury... are you in Nick's head, too, in your, according to your uh, standards and worlds? I mean, clearly, Nick is a competitive guy who's never won a lock championship and never really been in contention in the final week either. Oof. So he wants what I have. Feels like a good time to check in. Uh, so going over it, all the locks are in. We all have different teams this week. Greg Eagles, Mark Browns, Dan Falcons. And here are the standings through uh, week six. Disaster. Greg five and one. Uh, Zuzzer four and two. The West Brothers four and two. And Mark at 500. You're one of the 15. You're now the 16th team at 500 or around it, Mark. So you have some digging to do. But not, you know, you're all right. Or climbing, I should say. I'm not all right. I'm in last place. You need this one. I mean, this is, again, we got the Browns locked up by the Sizzler, the Quiet Storm. And I'm gotta have it lock stand. I might have to. I might have to. I am considering something. Oh, between now and the end it's of the show, not, we'll see not, if I it's do. It's not it. good. Okay, you gotta do it during the show. I know. No, no, I'm, I'm not, I am too. I'm like. I'm uh, thinking about doing something lock that's gonna be kind of fun. <laughs> put Greg in the crosshairs. Really? Yeah. Ooh, that would Ooh, be another right. lock. Thinking off. There's too it. many. This Spicy. this week's tough. This week is tough. All right. Uh, let's see. Greg, back to you. Okay, I'm going to take uh, the worst game on the board. I like to do that as my backup morning. Mark likes to do that high in the draft. Uh, <laughs> other people tend to go lower with the pick. Okay, I, go I ahead. can leave a different one for you, Dan. I'm going to take Raiders minus three at the Chicago Bears. We've reached it, guys. Uh, we're at week seven. This is a terrible game. <laughs> and um, we have in the National Football League, and I, for once I think that is necessary because I want to point out this is not uh, one of those spring leagues. It's not the XFL. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, uh, it's not the AFL. I think they combine the CFL. They are gonna combine. Yeah. Um, but we got we got uh. Aiden O'Connell potentially starting for the Raiders, Bench but we don't know. And we've got Tyson Badgett expected to start for the Chicago Whoa. Bears. I went and watched this this Badgett 16 dropbacks because people were like, hey, uh, Badgett actually was kind of fun. I was like, Why are you? Ah, he was kind of a mild disaster. <laughs> what am I missing? He, yeah. he dropped back to pass 16 times. He had two <laughs> disastrous turnovers. He made one really nice seam throw. I think was that to Mooney? I forget. Number two on the, that must have really registered the the yokels. Right, and he had a couple. He had a voice. couple. He had a couple of throws uh, that were that were fine. He got rid of the ball a little quicker than Fields, but I saw nothing in that game that made me think they're upgrading that quarterback. Put it that way. So I I guess I get why the Raiders are favored. But man, having Aiden O'Connell potentially favored by three points is also outrageous. Maybe the it idea is here outrageous. is Mac. Max Crosby just has four sacks and ruins the game single-handedly. Yeah. I mean, if, it, if, it, if they did throw in Brian Hoyer, this is, like, he's lost 12 straight starts. Okay, um, I, yeah, I should, I should can't anymore. provide context here that I'm just guessing O'Connell, but maybe it will be Hoyer. There was a report that they had decided who their starter will be 
And the idea was maybe like Hoyer was coming in when it's like replacing during the game. And Garoppolo is not practicing, but he's also not ruled out. We don't know much more. It's uh, yeah. I mean, this is these these are the, like games like this. Just both teams just um emanate depression. I just cannot. I'm glad you're watching this, Greg. Have a nice time. Yeah, with but it. here's the difference. One of them's favored to be four and three after that Sunday ends. Isn't that crazy? Well, Players. yeah, it's fraudulent. <laughs> is what it is. I mean, Josh Jacobs is. This is this is a w interesting. I'm, I I have to wonder if this, someone just cooked this into our into our research notebook as a complete fake. Josh Jacobs is on pace to join someone named Tuffy Lehman's. Yeah, that's the only Tuffy player. That's a, really a, that's a mark. Man. I got the big scoop. No, it's that's the only mark. player to average under three yards per carry this season after leading the NFL in rushing. Tuffy Lehman's, who existed back in 1937. So. Well done, Josh Jacobs. And we've got this. Devontae Adams is now. Yeah, but it's not Josh Jacobs. That's the thing. It's kind of like the Falcons. I'm more convinced than ever. Yards per carry is like an offensive line. Well, I mean, if we know anything about Josh Jacobs, there was some suspicion that what he was last year was just going to be for the next three or four years. He's always been hot and cold. The offense feels disorganized to me. Devontae Adams is upset. I think we've got some sound from him. We predicted this. Let's listen. To me, it's not just about, you know, I'm sure people thinking like, you know, well, they won the game. They won the Packers game. You know, why is there an issue? I mean, you see why it's an issue. You you know, y'all should know who I am, know what I'm about at this point. So it's not about, you know, when when you're a, when you're a player like me mentally, is the my benchmark is not wins and losses, is greatness. So when I go out there, I expect to be able to have that ability to put that on tape and have the uh, an influence on the game. And that's like I say every week. That's the, my purpose for being here. I'm not here just to hang out. It's like the uh, at the factories, uh, blank number of days without an accident, and then you got to somebody falls off a ladder or into a vat of acid or something, and then you have to erase the chalkboard. It's a tragedy. One of those would be worse than the other. And uh, and then you have to put the zero, and it's a tough move. That's We're back to zero days without a wide receiver chirping uh, to the media about their role. Of course, not every wide receiver <clears throat> is the same. Devontae Adams, he can chirp because he's Devontae Adams. And that's hard. Yeah, to me, that's productive chirping. It was, And it was on a question of why he wants to be better. Sure. I'm not, I'm not taking anything. I'm not... Uh, you know, going after Adams. I'm more just saying this is part of what comes with having wide receivers and, and high profile ones and elite ones. You got to get them the ball. If you don't get them the ball, you're going to hear about it either inside the building or outside or right. both. And, I, and that's what's happening here. And they do have to do it. They, they have do. to figure out a way. They're I wonder. Using him. He's been like, you know, more of a decoy in spots, but I do think he was like sold a bill of goods on some level because it's like, come back and here's the story. I never thought it was going to turn out great, but like come play with your best friend, Derek Carr, then you move on from Derek Carr in a way that Devontae yeah, Adams never understood. At the same time, like, that was a calculated risk from the very start. Sure. You like, went to a, a Raiders organization that has not done much of anything in years right. to join kind of a mid-tier quarterback that is a buddy of yours, and you left Aaron Rodgers and the Packers behind. It was always a bit of a gamble. The money was great, and getting back to Vegas or whatever it is was great. I wonder, and we could save it for a conversation next week, um, if this is the first of maybe a very quick uh, story. It building. feels flash pointy, but we have Ford. talked about this before. There was a move. I, he's also, by the way, on pace for 1,350 yards. He's not having so, like totally a totally different season. though. Right. Last year he was a yeah. monster. Right. He was every bit as productive and good as he was with Aaron Rodgers uh, playing with Derek Carr. But it, it just doesn't feel the same this year. And yeah. and, and he's and you've got and if you've got you know people like Brian Hoyer and Aiden O'Connell in there, it's not going to get any better. And like I was just saying to Greg, like could you if they weren't in the same division and the Raiders wanted to get out of this because it's just there's no way just. If he wound up on the Chiefs. All right. Wow. Let's move on. I was trying not to throw anything out there because we could save it for you know, a conversation. That's a fantasy. That's not about to happen. Huh? Never know. All right. Uh, I am up. And this one actually works out nicely because I really do. I was thinking about it after the Wednesday show. Like, ah, should I have been? And I wasn't the only one that said nay. I don't. Oh, I was actually with you the Giants. The Giants. I saved you the saved Giants. Them. Washington the Giants. So, and then I was thinking to myself, if I was willing to save the Giants in the Fork Committee proceedings, um, do I owe it to the G Men and to to the board, to the committee, to lock the G Men this week against the Commanders? And ultimately, I went against doing that because you just don't lock one in five football teams uh, because they got that way for a reason. However. I do. I like the Giants this week. I thought even in a, a crushing loss to Buffalo, um, I, I like this idea that the worst has the worst has passed this team. I didn't think. I don't think that this coaching staff overnight became bad. I think there's a reason why they were an organization on the upswing going into this year. I think they're going to steady the ship, and 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 that's why I didn't want to fork them because I think 
I think if we, in about a Is month. Is he going to do it? In about a month to six weeks from now, we'll be talking about, oh, the Giants, oh, they have a sneaky three-game winning streak all of a sudden. Yeah. It's like, and maybe that only gets them back to four and six, and it's not like you, you're, you're pounding the table that they're, they're going to the Super Bowl or anything. But I think there's going to be some life, and I think it starts here. I think the, the Giants at home, what is the situation? A quarterback, I would say that's important, but Tyrod Taylor, I think, is, is a good enough backup where the offense will remain functional. Uh, and against Washington, which is kind of a hard team to, to figure out week to week, uh, this feels like a, a G-Men victory week. I might be mm. alone on this. This is a crazy matchup. They, we're you know heading into week seven, and these teams have combined to give up 77 sacks, and it's pretty. It's 34 for Washington and 33 for the Giants. I mean, we've seen it a lot in New York on prime time, um, and with Sam Howell, who's been a like a really interesting quarterback, I think. But it's not like how it's different than the New York's offensive line is one of these units that you're talking about. That like every time you turn around, they lose. A starter, they lose backups, they lose third string guys. Like it is a complete disaster. And I think a lot of that is Daniel Jones getting crushed because of that injury situation. But Washington grades out by certain metrics is like around the eighth best blocking pass blocking unit. And Howell holds that ball. Thirty four of his sacks, thirteen of them are yeah. essentially charged on him, according to PFF. So, you know, I think if he could he, that goes back to his pre-college tape too, you know, if you look at some of the scouting reports. So, I mean, if he could change that, I think they've really got, they've got like a the chance to have a quarterback that is extremely productive, but this is maybe a chance for a pretty defunct Giants pass rush to Kayvon Thibodeau, our friend, like to him and the company do something there. I could count the number of sacks the Giants have had on all season on one hand. Yeah. Five. Mm. And that's despite Four being of them are Kayvon. the most blitz heavy team in the league i'm not sure if they actually have passed if they're ahead of minnesota at this point but they've been one two all year so they blitz like crazy and they never get home so that's kind of the question of every team that plays the giants is like how are you going to handle the blitz and the answer for almost every team has been awesome the giants are terrible i i don't see it i know they had like a good 60 minutes in buffalo in a matchup that, it, that we talked about already but for the most part i think the they are the worst team in the NFL, along with the Panthers, and now you can throw the Patriots in there. But in terms of like the total resume, I think they're it. And they're so injured on the offensive line, they're losing new guys in practice. Shane Lemieux tore his biceps on Wednesday. He was another, I think he was actually a yeah. replacement. I'm losing track of who's the replacement and who wasn't. He was. He was, but he had been there previously yeah. and been a starter previously. Evan Neal was a top 10 pick. A year ago, it's funny how like Kayvon sometimes gets attention. It's like Kayvon's been fine; he hasn't been great, but he hasn't been bad. Evan Neal was a top ten pick, and I think according to PFF, was ranked second to last among all qualifiers at tackle. It's time to get him off tackle. He's injured. Yeah. Andrew Thomas is injured still. He's not coming back. Like their center's still injured. So I just think Washington's gonna eat, and uh, I like the I like the Commanders. I like them uh, getting two and a half. Two and a half points. A yeah. And yes, I think what you're saying, we're talking about the struggles and the injury issues of that line. Uh, the Giants have allowed close to 100 pressures. The Commanders have 91 pressures, uh, and that's ninth most in the NFL. So here's the thing I will, you can call me in front of the committee, which will be a little weird because it was also the chairperson on Wednesday. Yeah, it feels that. Um, feels you could call, yeah, you could call me uh, in front of the committee on Sunday night if the Giants don't find a way in this game. I will not only um, apologize for delaying the mm. fork on the Giants, I will fork them myself, uh, which is, you know, difficult to do. I have many friends that are supporters of the g -Man. They'd get it. Uh, but it, it will be overdue. We shall see what happens. What if I, at that point, just to be annoying was like no actually now i'm gonna stop <laughs> stop the fork i did want to say not you greg not the giants you would never stop no the that's true the G daniel jones did practice wednesday and thursday but has not been cleared for contact so that leads his okay. uh, availability we'll in question because there is as far as i'm uh concerned a lot of contact in an nfl uh, game and let's let's move but we didn't get a chance to talk about this as a group that sunday night game against Buffalo. Man, when, when Saquon was heating up and he's running the football. He looked good. You got to keep keep feeding it to him. Too many times they went away from that, including on their, their penultimate scoring drive, when you should have just seen they were wearing down the Buffalo Bills. Can they do that against Washington? 
Uh, we shall see. Mark, uh, we're going to close out the draft with a, a double header from the Sestock. Yeah, I, I'm somehow now getting two late games. That should make for an interesting second part of the day. Yeah, uh, old uh, Sly Sestog. Th- did you have any type of game plan? Uh, Kaiser Sose to try uh, to get we'll, out of this well, one? Well, well, yeah, one of them's going to be given to Nick Shook. Yeah, so I was going to say, we, we will plan. handle this. We'll figure it we'll out. We'll figure this out behind the scenes. The listener does not care at all. Uh, all right, Cardinals at Seahawks. Um, I have to admit my, my uh, temporary luster for the <laughs> Cardinals operation uh, took a big hit in the second half of that Rams game. Uh, a number of serious uh, deficiencies were revealed. One that I think will really hurt them in this game. They, they're like the second one of the. Like, they're a bottom five run defense, and it shows. Um, they're bad defense in general. They're bad defense. A- anything in general. exciting about them has been offense related. It has been, and it's been you know all, even that has been happening for about thirty minutes out of sixty in games. Um, only five teams are giving up more points. I think this is the kind of game where if you're Seattle, it's in Seattle. They're you know they're giving up seven and a half. I, I could see them covering. Uh, without too much of a headache there. Mm. Uh, the Dobbs train is falling off a little bit. I think this is a, a great spot for Kenneth Walker um, just to run wild. And I, I, the one thing I noticed about Seattle's injury report, that there were Tyler Lockett a little banged up, DK Metcalf a little banged up, Zach Charbonnet a little banged up. Um, I don't know. I, I, think, I think in a way that may not matter too much if these guys can get, out, get on the field to some degree. Um, I would like to see one last little note on their offense. Jackson Smith and Jigba... Yardage totals in five games. Uh, I was wrong about this. I thought he would be coming in as like an offensive rookie of the year type candidate. 13 yards, 34, 10, 5, 48. I don't know. I thought they were like, I thought he'd like, well, I, he seemed to me like the guy that could come in and translate pretty quickly. No, their passing game has been quite uneven. I think last week against Cincinnati was a great example. Like Gino threw five or six passes as pretty as anyone in the league and had a ton of great completions, but when they needed to, they couldn't get it done. They've been very bad in situational football, red zone and third downs. It's very important. They haven't been able to spread it around. Now, they are, like the Giants, a team that's lost three or four starting offensive linemen, and they haven't looked so bad that like they're getting all the blame because of that, but maybe that's showing up. I think they're going to get one of their tackles back this week. Is that right? I think, is it Cross that's returning? Not Lucas. So that that's something. But I see you 12s, by the way. I happen to follow a lot of... Uh, Seahawks fans on Twitter, yeah. Seahawks media. We, we've, and you made that crystal. And I one, right? saw some Drew Lock chatter <laughs> popping up this week, and I just want to say, how dare you, Seahawks Twitter? Right, he's nothing. How man. dare you? He's played well this year. He's been an above-average starting quarterback. He played well in that game for the most part. That pressure was on him, on him quickly. It wasn't a great game. I I I got on him for holding the ball too long last week, but like. Their offensive line was a disaster in that game, and he's been very good. He's slightly, you, if you want Drew Locke, you can have him. You, you don't deserve I mean, it. Look at, dude, what was the face Greg just know. made on our YouTube if channel? If we could pull that up on a replay. I never yeah, want to see it. It's disturbing to be around. Listen, this is a bit of a straw, a straw man, Greg. No, because no. Because trust me. This is your way to they'll cover up. You. They'll, they'll let you know. There was a lot of Drew. Don't. Could we but start Greg, Drew Locke? But Greg, there are massive things that happen from fan bases that you would say have no credence, and you totally ignore. This one's stick, no, sticking with here you. Yeah, well, I have a higher bar. Are they them. in your head, Greg? They are. Annoying. They're in my head. Um, think about this, Greg. This is kind of smart, very smart of you. By saying, oh, people are talking about Drew Locke should be the starter. And then you could poo-poo that and bury it because yeah. obviously that's ridiculous. But then it allows you to get away from the more nuanced conversation, which is statistically um, Gino has not been as good this year as he was last year. And in a big spot last week, Gino mm-hmm. was unable to get the job done. And I'm not saying I'm not saying that Gino is now not the answer for them. He is over Drew Locke, certainly. But I believe there's certainly is something in play here, Greggy, that we could be back on the Gino coaster I a little agree. bit. Now, that doesn't mean it's like the Gino coaster of the old like Jets days. No, it's I better, think he's a better he's version. a better player. Yeah. But maybe he's just a little more up and down this year than last year, which was shockingly steady for most of the I year. think you can remove I think if you're including the what's going on around him. He's, he's basically the same guy. And then I look at the, the stats, like complete completion percentage over expected, I, uh, basically the same. He's 12th in that EPA plus CPOE composite. Like he's 10th in PFF. He was 11th last year. Like that's exactly to me who he looks like is a guy who's not quite a top 10 quarterback, a little outside that, but is playing well. I just so want to see how he's get to watch the games. We're gonna that's what I mean. You to see it, uh, how the season unfolds for Seattle. Go ahead, Mark. 
Well, I'll make my next pick if you'd like. Oh, I thought you had something to say. Go yeah, ahead. They can't go 0-2 in the division. Close it out. Sneaky big game. They can't. Well, they the, could. The Seahawks. I don't think the, the Cardinals can do that. All right, last game. Seven and a half there. This is a stinker. Green Bay at Denver. Yawn. Um, <laughs> sorry, it doesn't attract me. Well, have, have you lost? Because a, a, a Sessler staple of your football uh, fandom and a, as an analyst, you don't like um, longstanding setups for teams. Like Aaron Rodgers and the Packers drove you crazy for years. And you did have a fascination with this new Packers earlier in the year. Is that is that by the wayside now? I think like I just I I don't really trust like the Jordan Love offense to do a lot down the stretch where they're going to be. They feel like they're merging into sort of a non-story to me. That said, this is a great place to get right. The Broncos defense is um, an absolute car crash on ice. Uh, I think if you get you know, Aaron Jones is back at practice, that to me is a huge factor for Green Bay. They have not been able to run the ball well. They've really missed David Bakhtiari, but if you get Aaron Jones back and he's special, even in his lone appearance, he had a few big plays that kind of gives Jordan Love and everyone else a chance to do something. So I, I want to see what happens there against a terrible defense. So that at point, Green Bay would be back on track. Their last two games, Jordan Love, one touchdown, five picks, 51.8 Rating 16.5 points per game as an offense. They've been they, they've taken seven sacks. I think Bakhtiari has a lot to do with that. Um, I don't know. If you can't beat the Broncos, you got big problems because I, I agree. We all. And it's they like, couldn't beat the Raiders. That to me is the same. Well, that's why I think they're not a, they're, they're, they're far away from being special. But, and I, I know you can't, like, listen, you can't critique Russell Wilson. It's like, he has been better, et cetera. But last two Wait, games. That's a straw, man. No, no, absolutely. I, no, because I think it's like, if, I think it's, it's like, if you're going to go out and just kill Russell Wilson, then you haven't watched him play. Like, he had. Wait, we did, though. Yeah. He, we did after last week's game. He was terrible. He, the last, last two week. games, he's been it's, terrible. Like, the rest I of think the season, what you're fine. I'm just saying, in general, you can't just the say The first he's month terrible. of the season, right. and he's you fine. had boneheads on in right. Bristol saying, oh, he's been a problem. He was the problem in the second half against the Jets. He was the problem big time last week. So if he's yeah. trending downward, this actually could get worse for Denver if that's possible. Mm. But if he's like, the only thing I wonder a little bit is like, do you keep him like in there if he gets worse because you are trying to get like one of the two or three college quarterbacks? I don't know. No, I don't think that's. Well, first of all, so you're, so so you're exactly. saying that they would tank by not playing Jared Stidham. I mean, that feels well, like a stretch. I'm not seeing Either Jared way. Stidham. You're not sitting on. Uh, you're not sitting <laughs> right. on Kurt Warner back there. I get that, but like <laughs> Russell Wilson, the experiment. There's no way he's their starter next year on any level. So it's like, what are you doing with him now? You know, you're did you guys hear that? what you can do. Did you guys hear that? Um, Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton are on the trade block. <laughs> Cannot wait until November first. I mean, they have been since like Y2K. <laughs> it feels well, like. Well, they try. They here's the thing. Denver tried to trade them this off season, and when no one really wanted them at any reasonable price, then they had to pretend like they didn't try to trade them. And this is like from the Sean Payton media playbook, where look, he's got more national media in his pocket than any coach since I've done this job. He, he owns the media and controls the narrative around him better, I would say, than any coach since his former boss, Bill Parcells. And him presiding over one of the most disappointing, poorly run teams in the NFL is a real test uh, for that theory and the professionalism of everyone yeah, covering him. Greg, like, I, no one's getting on Sean Payton no, for what are you, being terrible. What are you terrible. talking about? He's like, been, I'm with you, like, up until this season. He's getting killed by people right now. I think he's, he's getting killed you know on what? this show. He's getting killed I all think, over the place. You know what? He's a laughing stock the... right now, but it's football fans and social media. Right. I, and I'm sure He's also been a good coach. It's people, not like we're like, it's King has no clothes. Like, he's this getting season. destroyed this year. Uh, but I guess to the point, and I don't follow it in the way that you do, Greg, so I can't tell I'm you. Right I'm right. curious what the names are, if, if you want to share them. Every single do. one. But who's e parroting for him right now? Like, who's saying, actually, well, you guys are wrong, Sean Payton's well, what is, up? It's not, it's not really the opinion makers. It's more like how the news is presented. Like, even the Judy Sutton stuff. Like, there are ways that you report on what's going on inside of the building. I think that doesn't happen with Denver because... Look, I, I think he's got everyone. Like, I wouldn't, I don't even need to single out a name. If there's someone powerful in the media, Sean Payton has a favorable relationship that I think gets him better okay. coverage. I mean, all right, we'll see what happens. I mean, here's the other thing: it, it ain't 2010 anymore, right? And he, he might have these great relationships, but if the team is terrible and the and the roster 
um, is not getting better, and they yeah. the whole thing's gonna crumble. It doesn't matter who you're in bed with in the or in cahoots with in the media. Uh, tough sitch for Broncos. Fans. It's a big test for Lafleur too, who's I I think at as discouraging a couple games as he's had since his first year as coach in in Green Bay because they started off okay and they've looked like you know one of the worst offenses in the league the last couple of weeks. And so here, here's a matchup where you should take advantage. We are getting healthier. We are coming off a bye. I'm not giving up on this Packers team totally. I wasn't that high on them to begin with, but I just think they at least have a chance to develop during the season into an interesting watch with and an interesting game. team. Yes, yeah, well, that's what I mean. And that's why they, it's a real test. And if Aaron Jones is playing, uh, run the rock. If A.J. Dillon is uh, going to be in tandem or leading the run the rock because you could just wear that team down in the second half. You see it every week. All right, that is the draft um anything else uh to hit before we say goodbye well we were waiting to see if mark was going to flip off his lock but oh, did you have he something didn't. he didn't do it well this is the moment this is the moment mark you want to make all right i'm going to do it <laughs> get the locks Wait, if ready. i hadn't brought it this no, up where you got to do I, it no i've been mulling this for a while you like, had a um, pensive look just i now. do think one thing with the locks i just definitely like i tried to not overthink it but of course Can i, I warn, didn't overthink just it. one warning yeah We've all been there. Right. You jump out of a lock. You're almost going through double the pain because you're tracking that first game. Should I have locked it? What if that team wins, then the new team loses? And yeah. I mean, you are just living through it. You're going through war in your mind. And now we throw it to Mark. It's, with it's, the big deci- yeah. it's decision 2023. It's less about um, that situation, which, you know, we've been through. Um, it's more about the show and what I think creates an element of spice. And it's like, you know, Greg wouldn't go take on the West Brothers a week ago, uh-huh. mm. which was a little suspect. You know, what, that, I, was, that, was, I thought it sh- that wasn't, that wasn't thinking not, about the show. Why would I thing. be taking a team that I didn't feel that strong was going to win? And I'm glad I, I didn't because, by the way, they lost, although they did. Yeah, you and all your, kind of, kind your Seahawks you. uh, media people that are all friends and love Geno Smith, that felt like a time to get behind the, the great Seattle Empire. Did. Are you arguing that I should have taken a loss? <laughs> well, you didn't well, know that at the clearly time. Clearly, was hindsight. It was the right move, but but point being, as a like, showman, as a showman, I right. think. What was I think you know we we um we've enjoyed covering these Monday night games, night after night. Yes. Um, or week after week, and uh, of course, I'm going to take Greg in a little lock up. This is Sunday night. Sunday. Oh. Well, we cover Sunday night too. Ooh. But it's we Spicy. we come back into the studio to cover Sunday night after we do the whole show, and like uh, I'm going to take the Dolphins. I I think it's you know a little suspect, but I like it. And in yeah. fact, uh, uh, kind of tying it all together, when my nine year old son Jack and we were going through the schedule, and I was like, who should I lock this week? And he didn't know what the hell I was talking about, right. really. But I was trying to explain it to him. He kept on pointing at the Dolphins. Well, you I gotta believe pick him. the Dolphins. You got to lock just has the a Dolphins. Power. Yeah. And um, again, I had too much respect uh, for Philly's operation and being pissed, quite frankly, after what happened in week six to do that. But I think they will. There's another like a, there's another scene I can imagine that doesn't mean this will happen where it's like, uh oh, Eagles back against backs up against the wall. Big time now. Two straight losses. You know what this is? Everyone acts like the Dolphins can't go on the road this and handle their business. This is a major. Miami. If, if, if you win a lock off with Rosenthal, I mean, Greg takes you out here. He's up three, and that's a tough spot. Right. You take him out. This is a major momentum swing, and I would not bet against you to win the whole thing if the mm. Dolphins take care of business on Sunday. Although I would uh, also not, you know, bet against an extremely dark Sessler, not even enjoying a Browns win if the Browns happen to win early, <laughs> and then well, this falls apart. I mean, the pressure. I don't know. The you good know, news for a, us, though, is, is that sports we, contest. It will just be one game. You can die, by the way. <laughs> that was not from today's show. <laughs> I don't wish death upon it. That was when I was disrespected before the, you know, I'd come, I drove across town to get to that committee meeting and you're not even suggesting my I name. I totally there. believe the, you. <laughs> the mask slipped just a little bit. <laughs> and that was an unfortunate oversight by the committee. And again, the committee. No, will, it was exactly. It was, it was completely organic. I'll be tarred and feathered in front of the community on Sunday night. If the giants uh, <laughs> make me look bad. So I have, a little skin in the game, a little more than I thought actually ahead of Sunday. Thank you to everybody uh, for watching. Again, Thursday Night Football with Greggy Rosenthal coming up later on Thursday and then Sunday, the flagship program. And NFL Plus this week. Check it out. Heed the call.